everyone, and welcome back to the bench at Expo Radio. Today we have again the ICOM IC 2800H, and we will be replacing the fluorescent backlight display with LEDs. And this will enhance the display a little bit. Um, it won't be noticeably different looking because it already has a pure white backlight. However, this will cause it to, to run a lot cooler because the main issue, um, as you've seen in my last video with these radios, is that the capacitors dry up very quick and need to be replaced quite often. So this will make it run much cooler. It'll draw less power. It'll last longer than the fluorescent backlight. And uh, yeah, keep those capacitors lasting much longer. Um, there's people that change these things out every couple of years, I've heard, just to keep them running because they run so warm. So let's swap these out. We'll get right into it. And uh, I'll put a couple notes in the description of uh, what I used for this process, but it's pretty simple. Um, I just had some kind of flat LEDs laying around. So that's what I ended up using. Anyways, enjoy the video. Like and subscribe, please. It helps me out. And uh, definitely leave comments what you think, what you want to see, anything you would have done different. Uh, let me know. So, unfortunately, I lost the footage of me fully disassembling this. It really wasn't that hard. Um, you basically just pull the plastic knobs off of all of the encoders and potentiometers. And there were a couple lock nuts that you unscrew. And it just pretty much falls out. There were about two screws holding that white plastic diffuser and the circuit board onto the front panel. So remove those and it the LCD sits on top of this diffuser that we're looking at here. And you carefully slide that out, undo the ribbon cable, put it aside and stay away from it for the time being. But what we want to do is remove the fluorescent lamp from this unit. There's a channel groove inside the diffuser where we're going to install our LEDs. And in this case, me only having these flat style LEDs actually worked out in the end, as you'll see. And I'll put a link to those in the description of what I used. So what the plan is here is to take these flat LEDs and kind of in parallel, we're going to daisy chain them, stack them into each other so they fit into that groove. And I'm just going to solder the legs onto each one and just make a little daisy chain contraption, as you'll see. And then we'll have uh, one set of resistors that feeds all of them, which we'll have to handle the wattage. And, uh, that's fine. So here I'm just trying to figure out how to line them up, the spacing, how many I can fit in there, and how the legs are going to be bent to make it work.
Now, what I've decided to do after some calculations is to go eight LEDs, a four in parallel using two parallel 560 ohm resistors on one side, and then the exact same thing again on the other side, and I will feed them from either end, just how the original fluorescent was fed from either end. This way, as you can see, I've got the LEDs as tight as possible buttoned up. I also filed them down so they were uh, diffused more, because you don't want the clear LEDs, they're more directional. You just take some sandpaper, sand the sides of the LEDs, it'll disperse light in all directions, which will help us. So here's a nice little website you can go to to do series and parallel calculations for LEDs for the size resistor you need. Uh, it might depend, uh, it might be different depending on the LEDs you use, but uh, this is what I ended up doing and it gave a perfect amount of light. Now, I apologize because a lot of the footage in this video was done on an old GoPro camera overhead and a lot of stuff was out of frame. So here I'm just going to show you where I got power for the backlight. The white wire that you see is a positive jumping from either side of my LEDs. So what I did was I, heat, I put heat shrink over the resistors and over the negative lead on either side. There's a negative jumper that I was able to jump across uh, inside uh, between the front cover and the circuit board. There was enough room. And then it comes up and terminates where the blue arrow is that you see there. That's a negative point. Now the positives is uh, the white jumping from one side to the other. And then tying onto that, we go to where the red arrow is 
And that is our feed point of eight volts, which is turned on. And that's feeding the old fluorescent backlight circuit. So if you look just to the right of that red arrow, there's that black round circle there. And that is an inductor that goes into the fluorescent driver circuit. So if you just heat that up with your soldering iron and bend it up and out, you could even remove it if you wanted. And that is where you tie in to your eight volt feed with the backlight.
so check it out as you can see it looks fan freaking tastic it pretty much just looks factory to be honest but it has perfect even distribution there's no hot spots in it it looks really good and the best thing is that it's running super cool um, I've, I've run this thing for a few hours now and it's just great i haven't had any issues with it so hopefully this will be the last capacitor job it ever needed uh due to the lack of heat so it's gonna be great i'm impressed with it and uh it's a pretty simple job uh didn't take too much effort to do it uh, everything fit in there without much modification at all so let me know what you think in the comments uh once again, I apologize for the kind of crappy out of frame video and I missed a, a few clips that have mysteriously disappeared, but uh, we'll take care of that in the future and uh, put out some better quality videos. All right, thanks for watching.